Let's unbox the Wacom One. Once you open the box, you get some paperwork. And then you get the Wacom One tablet itself. Then you get the pen stylus to the right. Let's take a closer look at that stylus. As you can see, it's thin. It has one button, no eraser top. We will set up that button later. Now let's see what's next. Ah, the cables. What you have here is a USB, which is meant to connect into the power adapter. Then you have the USB-C adapter, which connects into the Wacom One. On the other side, you have the USB 3.0 and HDMI cable, which connects into the PC or Mac device. Now, what do we have left? Ah, yes, the wall plug. So as you can see, it comes in two pieces and you just slide this piece in till you hear a click then connect the USB with the big square into the wall plug like this. Now I'm going to show you how to connect the USB-C into the Wacom One. So grab the Wacom One and as you can see the right side has the power button and on the left side you see the USB-C port and you plug it in like so. Now onto the USB and HDMI plugs. If you are using a MacBook, an old Mac, or even a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, you're going to need an adapter or a dongle. Here are some that I use. This is an Anchor USB-C adapter which has the USB port and HDMI port. And this end here goes into the USB-C port located in your computer. Just to show you how it connects, we are going to take the HDMI cable and plug it into the HDMI port like so. Now, if you have an older Mac computer, you will need this HDMI to Thunderbolt adapter to connect to the HDMI into your older Mac. Now, this is how it looks like plugging a dongle into a MacBook, which only has USB-C ports. Now the Wacom One is connected, you must download the Wacom Desktop Center. Open Google and type in Wacom. Then click on the Wacom website link accept cookies, then click on support, click on drivers and download here at the top, then scroll down and you will see two options. Pick the computer you're working on. If you're working on a Windows device, click Windows. If you're working on a Mac device, click Mac. Then click confirm download, then click allow, open the Wacom desktop center and it looks like this. Here on the top, you can enter a Wacom ID which you can create on the Wacom website. But as you can see to the left, you have options which are My Device, where you can see all Wacom devices which are connected to the computer. Below that are the backup settings, which you can download your pre-save settings. Then the update section, which is the first thing you should do when plugging any new Wacom devices, making sure your hardware is fully up to date with its firmware. Then you have support and last but not least, the Wacom store. Now, once you connect your Wacom One, it will pop up under my devices like so. You can see I have no updates. So let's set up the stylus. Click pen settings. Now what makes Wacom the best industry standard pen display tablet is that Wacom understands the hand to pen pressure. What that means is that when you're using a pencil or pen in real life, that hand pressure is transferable to a Wacom tablet. Now when you apply any pressure on the stylus, you can see it shows up in the bar under current pressure. If you have a heavy or soft hand, you're able to set the stylus to firm or soft, literally setting it to your natural hand pressure. The next thing you can set is the button on the stylus. By default, it is set to right click but you can click on the drop down menu and it gives you more options to set the button to your desire. Once you're happy with your decision, let's move on to calibration. Click on calibrate located next to the pen option. Then you will see another calibrate button. Click on that. And now on your Wacom One screen, you will see this. Just hit the targets on the corner of the screens with your stylus and then hit okay. Display settings. This is where you are able to set your brightness or contrast, even set the temperature on your Wacom One screen. So if your Wacom One screen seems a bit too blue, this is where you make those corrections. Welcome to Corel Painter 2022. 
Painter has added an in-app brush accelerator, which will help optimize the brushes according to your computer specifications. So the better computer you have, the better performance. So right here on the landing page, you can run the brush accelerator by going to the performance option located on the left side. Then hit the run button. Corel Painter actually has their own in-app brush tracking, which I would recommend doing simply to help unify the Wacom 1 to Corel Painter. To activate the brush tracking, go to Edit, then Preference, then Brush Tracking. When opened, draw something, but go from hard to light pressure, and you can see how Painter adjusts the brush according to your pressure. Now, another thing. I would advise any new beginner to set up your custom keys. If you are coming from another program, then you're able to help integrate yourself into Painter by making your custom keys feel more to your liking. So to set up custom keys, go to Edit, Preference, Customize Keys, and find what you need and change it. For example, when you look at layers, I set new layers to F2. So anytime I hit F2, a new layer will appear in the layer box. Okay, let's get started. Go to File, hit New, 9 by 12, 300 DPI. So before we start, I wanted to talk about the two panels beside the canvas. First panel is the color palette where you select the color for the brushes. And the second panel is the paper texture where you can see little squares with patterns. These are textures you can apply to your digital painting. When you open Painter's brush library, people tend to get overwhelmed with all the stock brushes. I'm here to help show you which two brushes are great to start with. The first brush is the Pastel Variable Oily and the second brush is the Soft 6B Pencil. So let's start with the Soft 6B Pencil. You're able to actually use the Wacom 1 Tilt feature on this brush. The Tilt feature is activated when you start drawing more on the side of the stylus. What happens is you're able to get a larger surface coverage when using the Tilt feature with the 6B Pencil. Also, you're able to get fine fine lines as well, which allows you to have more line options. This brush also works seamlessly with the paper textures, adding more realistic elements to your digital paintings. Here are examples of those features. Now onto the Variable Oily Pastel Brush. What's very interesting about this brush is that it's capable of blending the paint while painting. This feature makes this brush feel very realistic to painting with oils, where you're able to scrub the brush using the Wacom 1 pen pressure to blend the paint accordingly. This brush can also be used with the paper textures. So in this lesson, we will learn how to overcome the fear of starting. And it begins with a single mark. But I understand the weight of perfection we put on ourselves to counter that thinking, we need to cause some chaos and imperfections by just scribbling. We are simply allowing our subconscious free when we are unaware and causing unplanned, imperfect marks. Now the real artistry begins to form when you start to see things within these marks that weren't there in the beginning with just a blank canvas. Always step back and look at the canvas fully. The best way to do this is by zooming out and seeing the entire canvas. Another great tip is to keep everything as simple as possible. From only having two colors and two brushes, we eliminate ourselves from overworking and overthinking each mark. The mindset to overcome the fear of starting is to never be afraid to make mistakes and never be afraid to make a mark because through the imperfect marks, we'll lay a masterpiece which needs to be found. In order to find that masterpiece, we must not be afraid to just start.